This is Bob. I'm Bob Reese. Bob likes damselflies. So do trout. Bob, why do trout love damselflies so much? I think trout love damselflies so much for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, it's obviously a pretty good chunk of food and caloric intake for them. But I think it's more just the precise profile and the activity. You know, from imagining it from a trout's perspective, you've got this constant movement and buzz above the surface of shadows and shapes going back and forth. I think that kind of creates that, that laser pointer in front of a cat response uh, where it just triggers their instinctual, want to chase that down, want to eat it. And then mixed in with that, you've got the big splats and plops of the mating pairs that drop to the water as well. It just creates the perfect recipe for a feeding frenzy. In this episode of Trouts on the Water, Tanner and Yvonne head up to Wyoming to fish at the Damsel Fly Hatch. They were, it once. they were a little persnickety when I uh, first started this damsel thing. Put that in your put that in your video. Oh, it is. Persnickety. <laughs> Bob, what, so what, what do we got going on here? Talk to me about damsel flies. All right, so uh, we're uh, in the early week, first week of July, and we have a phenomenal damsel fly population out here. And the funnest part about that hatch is that uh, the fish will track these damsel flies underwater, so you get a lot of aerial takes, fish coming out of the water. Um, it's just really active and you get to see uh, probably a higher number of fish in the lake than any other time of the year. Pretty exciting. You think Tanner's gonna catch these? I, I'm, I give him a 50-50 chance. I'm gonna go with hopefully. Just need to leave it out there. I feel like he keeps moving his fly around a lot. It's kind of hard to catch fish when he's yeah, flying down the water. I'm kind of he is panicking. I mean, that fish just ate, dude. Why didn't you? Oh, oh isn't that you? That's that was you. you. That was oh, you, dude. I'm right over here. <laughs> I mean, can't believe you messed that up. Hey, you're doing a great job. Golly. You are. You're doing a good job. And they obviously, oh hate, my God. they obviously hate your fly. But I just haven't put it in the money spot. <laughs> yeah, all the spots they've eaten it. I mean, there's... oh, it's coming. <laughs> this poor man. I mean, are you gonna catch one? Or what? Dude? Yeah, I'm trying to get a couple hook sets for the big boy, <laughs> so I can start zooming in with the long lens. This guy's screwing it up. to kind of think about what a damselfly is is most of us know what dragonflies are uh, damselfly is like a, it's like a jenny craig version of a dragonfly it's much more thin and dainty uh, so when we say damselfly too like there's a bunch of different species i think there's a little over 2900 species of damselflies typically at least in the rocky mountain west area you know wyoming colorado where a fish uh, we see a lot of the, the blue adult males and the tan adult females still have the big bulgy eyes just a little bit smaller nice warm sunny day uh, once those water temperatures start to climb and at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning hour starts to come around you might see hatch activity throughout the rest of the day and it's important to note that the, the hatch is a little bit different uh, it's not the rise up to the surface film like a mage or a mayfly and they break through the film uh, damsels are swimmers they're really active swimmers in the nymph stage and so um, I guess the best way to describe their movement they they kind of swim like sperm swim uh, except they're tan and green so they, they swim toward the edges of the body water looking for some sort of structure and a greater purpose and hope uh, and when they find a piece of grass or a stick or a stump they'll crawl up on that or rock um, and then they'll hatch out of the back of their exoskeleton and they actually have to hang out there for a little while uh, while that wing material unfolds and dries out and then they're free to fly around and do their thing
trout seem to kind of have two different approaches or two different moods. Uh, and I really think it depends on what the damselflies are actually doing. So those males and females, a lot of times they'll pair up in the air to mate. And as soon as they stick together, they'll drop to the surface of the water. They lose their ability to fly. And so they're kind of stuck there on the surface. There's a lot of fluttering and movement. And typically those takes uh, tend to be a little bit more subtle of a sip or maybe a last minute little acceleration up to take it off the surface. And that's obviously fun. That's slow dry fly sip. Uh, and then there's the flip side of it, those independent adults that are flying around. If you get in an area or on a body of water where there's enough density of adults, you'll get those fish that start to track down the adults. And some of them will track them down as the damselfly actually flies over the water and they'll break water and try to catch them midair. Uh, other fish will work like grass banks and, uh, and sedges or weed beds um, where damsels will post up on the actual structure and those fish will come in and go airborne out of the water and try to eat the damsel off of the structure that it's sitting on. Right. Thank you.